we are in a Rajasic galaxy. It's a restless galaxy. Rajas in Hinduism means restlessness. It's the kind of seed of desire. And desire isn't always bad, but it's definitely not always good. We are restless in between the forces of sattva, purity, and tamas, which is darkness, torpor, doesn't want to change, wants to be, wants to fall. There are many galaxies within this universe alone, though there is, there are many universes. Um, the amount of galaxies is so massive that we can't really understand it. But ju even within this universe, there are sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic um, galaxies within. So let's start with sattvic galaxies. People tend to get along. People find themselves less likely to want to fall into ignorance or anger or a state of being that is completely selfish. It's very easy to exist in a community that is mainly sattvic. It's very easy to exist on a planet that is sattvic. But the reason why these planets are sattvic is because only someone who has reached that stage of their spiritual development is born there. Now, there are plenty of people who are, are attached to one planet and keep on being born on one planet. That's a given. But once you re reach a certain stage, you can be born on other planets. If the one that you're on no longer allows you to practice what you've learned. So Rajasic new galaxies and planets, what have you, like our planet, not really sure how many uh, solar systems have sentient life in the galaxy that we are in, the Milky Way, but our Jossic world or solar system or galaxy is defined by a restlessness between virtue and indulgence. And a lot of what we think of as being human, as what it is to be human, is this restless state that we're trying to improve ourselves, but we're dragged down by that which entices us, which we want. We think of life as being that, trying to hone ourselves enough so that we meet the expectations that we either have for ourselves or our society has given us, so that we can be in a virtuous and pure state in our own understanding. But we have this very big weight of you know, sexual desire, a desire to consume things, desire to own things, that is pulling against our higher self. While our higher self is trying to liberate us, pull us out of this, that is the weight that tries to drag us down. Tamas. What is Tamas? So when I say Tamas is darkness and torpor, torpor isn't necessarily like you completely remain still. Torpor is, it means that your energy is just so heavy that it can't be above. It's very difficult for you to go to another level higher up uh, in attunement. It, you're very heavy with the energy that, that Tamas is. Tamasic planets and a Tamasic galaxy, there will be dark gods who, these, not necessarily citizens, but people who live in a Tamasic galaxy it's likely that they will offer human, uh, not human, but uh, sentient beings. They will, it's it's that they will rape them, kill them, and then that is the offering to the dark god. And I'd like to say that I didn't get this from like a Christian source. This is actually from a source that is completely opposite, not satanic, but very much a chaotic cult. And I, you know, I. I the whole, everything that I do, I cross-reference between different sources. That's why I can tell you what that I think that I know, but once again, I just think that I know. Um, but once again, this was a this was a source that was not on what we consider the virtuous side. Um, I think that these beings, this race, is the Dreleth. Um, I think I remember that correctly. Um, but you know, in a Sotvik galaxy. There's no, you don't need to sacrifice anything but your effort. And very light oriented gods. Tomasa galaxy is very dark, a 
affiliated gods. Rajasa galaxies, we get all of them. <laughs> and we think that this is normal. Um, it's normal for us. So, when it comes to energy, when it comes to the astral realm, I'm talking about things that exist on the material plane. But they also exist in a macrocosmic kind of way in the astral plane. Basically, everything that exists here is just bigger in the astral plane or and more intense. There are astral hells, astral heavens, and everything in between. It's not necessarily that when you die and you lived a good life that you go to an astral heaven and then you'll be there forever. There are heavens that are meant to work off your good karma and, you know, it's great to be there, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you advanced upon your spiritual path. The heavens that I'm talking about, the astral heavens, are when you have actually advanced. And there are certain planets where <laughs> Haranya Loka is a planet that um, Palamanta Yogananda's guru, uh, Swami Sri Yukteswar, went to because, you know, him being a teacher here was too demanding of his students, and also he was ready to move on. So he, now he's a teacher on Haranya Loka. And on Haranya Loka, as well as many astral planets that are in the positive side, um, souls take turns being different objects, trees, grass, animals, humans, but nothing is necess is not, pr nothing is predatory. There's no, there's no idea, there's no realization or experience of death there. It is made of pure light, though it might look very similar to where we are, it'll be way more vibrant, everything is light. Um, there is no birth that happens there physically. Um, souls are welcomed into families based on their kind of vibration, their certain vibration. And then families will welcome in somebody um, and say, you know, the, you, should, you should be part of our family because you have a similar, similar vibration to us. And now all these beings on, let's say, Haran Yaloka, as with the many astral, plan, uh, many astral planets that are not in the negative side, um... There is difference between beings, but it doesn't necess necessarily mean that the beings disagree. Everybody is different, but not in the negative. There's no negative differences. It's all positive differences. And most beings would agree in a place like that on this or that. But even if a being didn't, if they're there, they wouldn't be chastised. It's a hard thing to describe. In the astral realm... Um, there are, there are astral hell. Well, the hells are in the astral realm and then, well, I'm not going to mention the other ones, but, uh, <laughs> cause I don't want to get too close to my main enemies. At any rate, there's bad side and don't worry, they're not the princes of hell. That's, that's really not my business. Um, but there is the negative side to the astral, uh, plane and even planes perhaps. Um, I think one yogi described it as these are mansions upon a world or mansions in space, which means everything is very confined in these certain hells. When somebody does things very bad, um, they are confined within them. And then, you know, you might say that they're confined within the soil of being the worms in the soil while all the angels can go wherever they want and fly. Um, but to get to an astral hell, no, hell, all hells are astral. To get to an astral hell, you have to do something, you have to do things very, very badly. Uh, because usually if you live kind of like a, a dickish life, an evil life, bad things, not anything too bad, you'll, you'll reach the levels of uh, lower animals, insects maybe, um, in reincarnation. But you have to kill a lot of people or hurt a lot of people or just be very, very bad in your consciousness to get to the astral hells. And I don't think anybody watching this meets that criteria. Um, I wouldn't say that you have to be somebody like Stalin or Hitler, but those are kind of figures that, because of the detriment to humanity that they caused, would definitely be in the astral hells for quite a while. I think that Palamas Yokananda said that uh, Stalin was sent to hell for 100,000 years. Now, in perspective, Judas, he was only sent there for 2,000. That shows you how much worse 
Stalin was. And I'm sure I probably missed the facts about Hitler and how many thousands of years he's going to be in hell. Once again, Hitler was all, also Alexander the Great. Anyway, a lot of random information. I'm, I apologize for that. But there are there is this idea that if your vibration is very, very low in the sense that you're drawn certain places because um, every, everything else was either too good or too bad, you kind of gravitate towards certain planes, certain universes even. Uh, because there's a lot of universes that aren't even in the astral, but there are many, many astral as well. This is a lot of information that I'm telling you that someone would have to cross-reference a lot of different works, which I have. And this is what I'm telling you that I think that I know, but do not take my word that I know this. I do not. And I'm not professing the idea that I do know this. I am not. I'm saying this is. these are my best guesses based on cross-referencing various data, books, and teachers, swamis, yogis, and uh, even people on the left-hand path. Um, people who worship demons, work with demons, um, uh, worship various uh, chaotic gods. I cross-reference everything. This is why I can present to you with at least a little bit of an image. Even if it's not true, I think that it is. So, it's very easy for us as human beings to feel that we are very imp important as an individual. Very easy. Because we have a singular device platform from which consciousness observes things. Our platform is our body. And the decisions that we make within ourselves, and even the ex and when we when it leads into the external world, um, are very much a product of choice. And a lot of the time, we don't even really realize we're being selfish. But when we consider everything and how people act and how we act, many people are selfish. And this is a detriment to your spiritual progress. So if anything can be changed, ask yourself every day, what could I do better today? Or this is what I did yesterday, what can I do better? You can have your own ideas about virtue, not a problem. But whatever your own ideas are, figure out exactly what virtue is to you. And before ending this, I have to talk about saints just a little bit. So, many saints, I'm not going to say, you know, many saints, a few of the ones that I've, I've heard uh, discourses on or history of, they say things like, you know, before I reached sainthood, I thought sainthood was the end. But then I realized that it's just a new beginning on a higher path. When you reach sainthood, it's like, leveling up in Mario or something. You're, you're introduced to a whole new plane of existence. Not even necessarily a different world because people become saints here. Um, but you reach a certain level of consciousness where it's just like, oh wow, I, was, I just got this level up and then now it's a whole new landscape I need to walk through. That, the landscape I cannot, I cannot give any of my conjecture on. I cannot give any of my information on because I don't have any. Um, saints, their level of consciousness is beyond me and beyond my understanding. Um, but I would consider somebody a saint as St. Francis of Assisi, many yogis, uh, Swami Teshwar, for instance, St. Philip. Um, they don't have to be saints. They don't have to be in a particular religion. When I'm talking about saints, I'm talking about saints in general. I'm not talking about, like, one religion. Um, but that's kind of what it, what all of us are shooting for, whether we know it or not. And we're learning our way into leveling up. And that's okay. It'll take time, but that's okay. We shouldn't imagine that time itself is our enemy. It's just the ticking of a clock. And the ticking doesn't mean that we're going to run out of time. It means that how long is going to take you to develop yourself, your higher self, who you are, who you were always meant to be, whoever that is. At any rate, this is, uh, has been a video about uh, our universe and how it works. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see all of you on the channel in the future.